I was thinking this week about the marking of time. Throughout the last few months, one common conversation among everyone I know is how much this pandemic has shaken up our sense of marking time. Where we used to have set routines that helped us know exactly what day of the week it was, now I hear all the time, what day is it? We like to mark time. And we do the same thing in the church. The liturgical calendar helps us keep track of where we are in any given year. But following the church year is more than simply marking time on a calendar or seeing the colors change at the front of the sanctuary. It helps remind us that we, as Christians, are part of God's time. The festivals and seasons of the Christian year offer a way to order the annual life of the church according to the life of Christ's and the events of our salvation history. The Directory of Worship elaborates, as God created and appointed days, God created a rhythm of time and appointed seasons for worship. In the Old Testament, people observed seasons of fasting and feasting as occasions for festival worship of God. Jesus kept these festivals. For the church in the New Testament, the festivals were transformed in meaning and purpose by Jesus's life and teaching his death and resurrection, and by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' birth, life, death, resurrection, ascension, and promised return give meaning to the seasons which order the annual rhythm of worship and guide the selection of lessons to be read and proclaimed in the life of the church. Through two millennia of Christian worship, a certain cycle of festivals and seasons has emerged and is now recognized and observed throughout the ecumenical church. Some of these events, Pentecost, Holy Week, Epiphany, can be traced to the earliest centuries of Christian practice. Others, Trinity Sunday, Christ the King, developed later in the history of our church. The Christian year takes believers through the story of our salvation. In the season of Advent, we pay homage to the Father's promise that he would send a gift of love for mankind, a savior, and we prepare for the return of the Messiah. We anticipate for the miracle by making our own way straight, hearing the call of John the Baptist. Purple is normally Advent's liturgical color, associated both with the sovereignty of Christ and with penitence. Deep blue is also sometimes used to distinguish the season from Lent. During the season of Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, who is God with us, the ultimate Christmas gift. We remember that by him, through the Holy Spirit, God is still with us today and will not abandon us in the crush of daily life. At Epiphany, we discover the king announcing himself to the whole world. Like the three magi with the Christ child and those looking on as Jesus was baptized later, we too are amazed at what God has done and realize it is not just for us, but for all. The traditional color of the season of Christmas through Epiphany is white, symbolizing joy in the light of Christ. The season of Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, and we take a hard look at our own role in the unfolding drama that we can't stop or change. We re-examine our own sin, and we realize how weak and cowardly we can be in facing it. We turn to God, who is the only one with the power to forgive and change us. As we approach the end of Lent, we enter the Paschal or Holy Week. Purple is used for the Sundays of Lent, and then during Holy Week, the congregation follows the footsteps of Jesus from his entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, through the Last Supper on Monday Thursday, and on to his death on the cross on Good Friday. At the end of the Monday Thursday celebration, the mood changes abruptly. All decorations are removed and the holy table is stripped bare. 
the church becomes as empty as a tomb. On Good Friday, either black or red is customary, although the use of no color at all is also appropriate. During the season of Easter, we celebrate God's sacrifice. Although men killed Jesus, mankind was redeemed. God has forgiven us. The liturgical color for this season is celebratory white. When the season ends on Pentecost Sunday, white is replaced with red. This color reminds the congregation of fire, the symbol of the Holy Spirit. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit overpowered the barriers of culture and race. The first Sunday after Pentecost celebrates the Trinity and the color again is white. In the season after Pentecost, we enter what is referred to as ordinary time, which is marked by green liturgical colors. The season is called ordinary from the Latin ordinaire to put in order by numbering. An ordinal is a number used to place something in order as first, second, third, etc. Thus, this coming Sunday will be the 19th Sunday of ordinary time. In a non-church way, we use the word ordinary to convey something familiar in the usual order or the way things normally are. However, there is nothing ordinary about ordinary time this year with a global pandemic, increased famine, high unemployment, racial tension, and a severely broken political system looming ever larger before us. In this context, we rest secure in the knowledge that its ordinariness has to do with its numbering by God, who keeps track of everything and loses sight of nothing. Ordinary time is always extraordinary time with God of it all at the center of it all. So in the midst of ordinary time, we go about our ordinary tasks that help give us an awareness that ordinary things continue as they have been. Most of all, God's extraordinary love, grace, strength, comfort, and hope are ordinary each day as we walk through the pandemic. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. I sing the mighty, I sing the mighty power of God that makes the mountains rise, that spreads the flowing seas abroad and build the lofty skies. I 
sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to roll the day. The moon shines full at his command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that fills the earth with food. He formed the creatures with his word and then pronounced them good. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed where'er I turn my eye. If I survey the ground I tread, or gaze upon the sky. There's not a plant or flower below, but makes thy glories known, or clouds arise and